All right, Roan, I'm I'm digging what you're doing there, man. It's just simple. It's it's uh it's rich, but it's simple. Uh, Al, nice, nice touch. You're not uh, for a drummer. You're not. Uh, <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> you keep playing like that. One day you will find a girlfriend and a job. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> you're a drummer. You're not supposed to know. <laughs> uh, so the poem we're doing here is called Radmila at the Corner Cafe. And it goes something like this. I'd visit this cafe on the corner in the main square of Vrshat, Serbia. Not a busy intersection in the piazza like the ones of the few happening places to go. Winter fog matching the temperature, gloves needed. Weathered wooden cupola fixed atop the two-story corner building has been nailed in well, but it was a dive. The owners did invest in good service and average wares of a post-communist beverage hangout joint. A pretty girl who worked there, Radmila, 20-something, waist-long hair, brunette, slender with jeans fitting rightly. A teenage boy may stay with the linger longer than needed. Angular features with a Roman nose, the genetic statues left behind of wars past. Black boiled coffee and cigarette stained teeth, but who cares? Cracking a smile, her lips when I walked in, spoke way enough without saying a single damn word. Day one, she had me with that smile. I had no romance with her to speak of, that she knew of. I'm soft in my eyes, easy on my voice. How quickly I could make her laugh with my silly attempts to connect. She was the girl next door in every country, might I add, was good at convincing me that she had a basket full of her own homemade charm. She passed out generously. I nibbled at it. A pretty waitress learns that early on tips are better that way. In the regular urges to get out of my cousin's house, those footsteps sojourning, unlayerings of self-discovery rooted here, new words attached to the senses, wakening what's needed. A relationship many times ago, I'd be here in winter because the broken, poor poet in the making could save enough for the flights over the Atlantic Ocean. You get almost no plant garden life among the fog and snow. The moods, wintry, huddling for the heat to radiate somewhere. The locals know where to go. There's human gardens to sow. Turkish coffee, hot, steamy. A new shade, but not black of sorts I knew. A soft, dark brown, but a color that has never been tasted better. The old wooden windows, a hundred or so years old, I'd walk through the double wood doors that never seemed to close right, leaving a crack wide enough to need a coat if you sat near it. I'd walk to the corner table where I would think the cigarette smoke would be less if the kid peeing at the end of the swimming pool wouldn't affect me. It was smog. If there was a symphony of smokers, the entire national orchestra had done, arrived. Radmila would light up with her lover's morning face, prep herself for something playful out of place. I'd say to bring out some sense of spiring blossom in us both. Yes, I'd light up and have an impish glow in a soft teenage boy crush that I came here years later and saw the cafe turn into a sportswear store. Dead soil where ballads, lyrics, and melodies left musical pages empty. The new construction of the floor was updated and well-built. First floor, neglecting the second floor was out of place. Second floor, almost seemingly abandoned. The small balcony designed for the town crier to announce all births, all deaths, all marriages. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye all. As I stood back from the entrance, I knew I couldn't walk in. 
I just figured Radmila probably doesn't work there. Thank you. Great job, right. Joyce. Wow. I'm, I'm, <laughs> this is great. I didn't know it was coming. I oh, was coming. wow. Oh, you don't listen to music. You feel it. Oh, oh thank wow. you. Wow. Yeah, and it was a sad story. When I went to the cafe, yeah. I was looking for that meal. And this was a, this was a charming little thing. She was sweet. You know, they're sweet. And, and you know, it's hard life there. People hardly make any money. It's cold. Mm. Who's walking in there, right? It was, it was packed. People smoking. Like, they've got the cigarette in their each finger <laughs> lock here. Like, they're playing harmonica. And I'm walking. I hate it. I hate it. But it's the only place that's open. That was kind of cool, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And it was in the corner, all this old wood stuff with the windows you knew it needed ceiling, all kinds of things. Yeah. It looked like something totally 100 years ago. That, well, it's that, a different world. And then, I mean, places like that are special as well because so much of the rest of the world is the same now. Right. You know, and we expect that kind of, you walk into a Starbucks, it's going to be the same thing every time. It's, yeah. You know, those weird little places. Yeah, are, yeah. You know, it's so a, I, 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 play, yeah. we used to play a really great... Uh, gave it a place called the the Dolce Vita wine bar right and I don't know how they were even open like the the smoke from the kitchen would fill the entire place yeah and and everyone that working there was drinking wine, wine. Like, right no way they could legally get away with uh, that it was, the best it was absolutely needed. beautiful you know and and it, it was food they gave us to, wine everything we needed you go to yeah. London now and every shop in London you walk through London yeah pizza, goodbye Starbucks. everybody